VHS tapes I'm in our office we have 11,000 VHS tapes here and we're like we're watching a lot of them aren't we Nick we are and uh I want to just point out this is your birthday show which has become somewhat infamous because of your predilection for gross tedious disgusting clips so there's already been talk online of people dreading what they're about to see in the show they'll all tune in they'll all be here they all see they all want to see the train wreck now but but Nick, I was going to ask, so you agreed last week that you would dangle, I can't remember if we said 45 pounds or 45 ounces from your dink, like the like the um, uh, Chinese lovemaking video. Yeah, I did not agree to that, actually. I said there's no way in hell I would do that. Oh. But uh, I had a change of heart. Um, and I just want to go to a live feed right now. I had set up my cell phone down here. So um, take a look. Is that... Yeah, so there's <laughs> that's uh it's 15 pounds, which is the max I could do. Um, okay, well I'm 45. Is, I'm not I'm not 15. Yeah, I know, I know, but this is uh, the most that my genitals could stand to uh, have connected. So that's just going to be. We can check back in throughout is the it, night, but that's just kind of dangling there did you from my office the, chair. Did you tie the rope around your dink or around? Exact the... bingo. Yep. Okay, the dink. Yeah, the dink. <laughs> yep. So that's just hanging out there. We'll check back in throughout the night. That should be interesting. We're off to a great start. I got some presents already from some Melinda's. First of all, Wayne sent us a video this week. How can I make friends? She asked mm. if we had this one. She said, and we do not have this one. Still in the shrink. And now, Nick, finally, we can figure it out. Good, because so far it's just us four. Yep, um, that's and, it. Uh, we haven't gone outside that circle. Amber I, sent... I, oh, go, oh, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Amber sent me this gift. Uh for uh, called Pooping Cat 2021 Calendar. She knows me all too well. Uh, and Amber, of course, she's the uh, she's an IMG harvester. And uh, but look at, I was wondering like, will they show the the poop actually coming out of the cats? Oh, they do. So you actually see the turds coming out of like Jazz here, for example. Huh. Yeah. I'd recognize Lancaster, Ohio, anywhere. <laughs> yep. So I like that they give the location. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? uh well wonderful <laughs> gifts i got some even though um i don't deserve them but uh these this is from bob hedges this is uh san francisco belly dance festival mr and mrs america of the belly dance contest 1989 it so looks like it was uh, like xerox copied at a kinko's or something and then they stuffed it into the sleeve exactly bob actually it. sent me a birthday present today i'm going to play it it's the hardest i've ever worked on a video for vcr party like hmm. I put in t- 12 hours. I worked wow. six hours Whoa. yesterday. I worked six hours today on this thing and I'm not even done. Wow. So yeah, that's, okay. in, that's in the ravioli section. So um, George sent me this. This was on my desk when I arrived today. George, how do you open these? Uh, I don't know. The, the uh, fellow from uh, eBay packaged it. Okay. That's George. That's oh. Steve joining us today. Didn't oh yeah, yeah. You. they're here. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Batman Corn Pops. Right. Well, it's Batman Forever from 1995, and it joins the 1989 Batman serial and the 1992 Batman Returns serial. Uh, that's part of your future puke collection. Uh, and you also told me that you always wanted a cereal box that had Chris O'Donnell on it. Yeah, Remember, I did you've say been that. saying that for years. Can I ask you this? Is it part of a balanced, is it part of a balanced diet? Balanced um, is that what I'm not said? sure if that year they might have like had to risk, take that. There was like an asterisk next to it for How much the year that it for? wasn't. Uh, mostly shipping. 
Okay. <laughs> this guy had this sitting around. It's in mint condition too. Now, how old do you think this is? 95. Oh, really? Okay. So if I eat it, it'll be gross? I mean, I, I, I have, it, I have it a says feeling... Batman forever. I mean, you'd think it would be right, right. Tr tr uh, this might be a great lawsuit. Okay. If, if you have an attorney. Sticking out of this hellhole. Always yeah. looking for it. Thank you, George. It's very <laughs> sure. thoughtful. This one is uh, Bob sent this. This is plastic canvas handy totes. It's just I like I collect these little like uh, knitting guides and craft guides. And this one you can see from the music lover in your life. You could uh, make that if you're uh, into dance. And then I like this one. If you're just a big bingo fan, you could keep all your daubers and your uh, or your what's, dabbers and whatever into that uh, little. What what's that other one that your hand is covering right now? It looks like a, like Wait, a, a uh, testicular sheath. No, it looks like uh, a uh, no, it looks like a truck nut. You remember those? Yeah, yeah. Nuts? Yeah, it looks like I, truck nuts. Ballet shoes. Ballet oh, shoes. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. Nick, will yeah. you sew like truck nuts and put them on the back of your Prius? Like sew them. Sew them like like that like. <laughs> Using that, like the oh, using this as a guide. Yeah, yeah, but do Absolutely. it, but make it look like nuts, but then hang, dangle them from yeah. your Prius. Sure, it's a it's my new plastic canvas craft project. So, uh, one more thing, uh, we we had this tape. Bob sent a really mint condition copy, so I, I we're always happy to have more Geraldine and Ricky. I think I played some of this. It's worth with the uh, in the very early VCR party with one of the pastors is like the perfect straight man. He's like, well, what's that, Ricky? <laughs> Yeah. And uh, but he sent a DVD that I'd never seen. This is very specific. Geraldine and Ricky with Mr. Drummer Trevor Thomas live from the strawberry capital of the world. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's uh, Sioux Falls, right? Sioux the, Falls, uh, the strawberry it, capital. It doesn't uh, actually say. Okay. So, uh, I, I think I'm pretty sure it's uh, Sioux Falls. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. Sioux Falls. So I am looking forward to diving into that one. <laughs> now, can we uh, can we see your genital? Well, not your genitals, but like your uh, the the weight that's hanging from your genitals can we see absolutely that? i just have second to back in yep i just have to switch to my live cam just a second here okay wow high tech setup you got there yeah well here's the live cam let's see i just gotta hit okay now when we when we cut back to it can you add more weight to it could you add like another 15 pounder and then by the end of the show we could be up to 45 i'll try but uh you know i my genitals can only hold so much i did some experimenting and uh it capped out at 15 so yeah but okay we'll, we'll, We'll we'll try. I mean, I what's the worst too? that could happen? Can I ask you this too? Is your is right now? Is your wiener is it really long and narrow and really like? Rubbery? You guessed it. Yep, <laughs> you guessed it. It's exactly like that. I wish I could show it. I wish I could, but um, well, YouTube wouldn't allow it. So, yeah. yeah. How about a uh, found footage festival classic for your birthday? Let's do it. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. Oh, this this is an annual tradition now. Dr. Sternholm, I looked it up, I grabbed it off the shelf, and uh, here he is, <laughs> one of the greatest spines. Is that upside down or is that right side up? No, that's right side okay. up. Yeah, do you see Dr. Sternholm on there? Yeah, there he is at the top. And uh, he's, oh, he always has a J, he has a J in his name, and it just doesn't really make sense to have the J right there. I don't get it. But anyway, this video, I don't even know where we got it. It's a doctor set up a camera, and he talked to patients, I think he was just experimenting with his camera. I think that he wanted to to play around with it and do something with it, but he didn't know what to do with it. So these people and, are always perplexed. Yes, and our our buddy uh, JC cut a, a clip to put on the web from this, and it is to this day our least viewed clip on any social media on any YouTube, and yet it's somehow your favorite. Nobody likes this clip. I love it. I mean, you it's, do. it's It's my favorite kind of tedium. It's, and, it's like confusing yeah. tedium because people and dr the, sternholm was on the cover of our strange men oh, uh, yeah. vhs release as well that. so yeah yeah it's on Stra well, it's it's, strange men. we only have it on vhs too and we have a digital download and vhs so okay uh, yeah there's yeah this this cut is on uh that so here he is dr sternholm annual viewing buckle up <laughs> already <laughs> so uh, that's the point right. okay thanks again steve All appreciate right. it uh-huh I think he calls the remote control the pusher. Mm -hmm. Look at. I'm Dr. Sternholm. Yeah, I'll let you hold this picture with me. And uh, let's see if we can what? zero that camera. Why is the doctor one? asking it's them to hold the picture of the buffalo? Out, in front of. And I'll just let you both sit tight and we'll just fade out here, okay? okay. Thanks, Doc. He's going to let them sit tight uh -huh. and he's going to walk away. Why? What are they? There's x rays. Oh, I don't want to know. 
I'm Dr. Sternholm, and uh, I'll just pick up my little sender here. Sender. This little sender. thing is so small, I'll, I'm constantly dropping it. So if you'll sit back for just a minute, we'll uh, get a little in the picture for the, in order to uh, get it someone to the other. Thank you. In order to get someone to the <laughs> That's, the, that's one of the best trail-offs in video history right there. Listen <laughs> to this trail-off. <laughs> we'll uh, get a little in the picture for the in order to uh, get someone to the other. Thank you. <laughs> in order to get someone to be out here. Thank you. You gotta add that to the end of the show. Good morning. I'm Dr. Sternhall. Uh... Oh, he's dropping she a sender. Now, she knew I had a herd of buffalo. Sit tight here for just a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh everybody's just. Nobody asks why. What? And this is Connie and her daughter Ashley. <laughs> now watch. Where are you taking her? Here. Watch. Watch. Something happens because she's watching, and then she kind of gets serious, and then she makes a face. <laughs> <laughs> Did he almost <laughs> drop her? I'm guessing he dropped the sender. There's our annual viewing, oh. Dr. Sternholm. Happens once a year, and yeah, look for my money, to that's too many. That's too many times. Um, but, <laughs> well, yeah. we go up one view every single year on that video. <laughs> True. So, Steve, yeah. what uh, background do you have? I mean, it's hard to miss your background today. Yeah, what well, was that? This is uh, Dr. Judas Old Time Boner Pills. So I think it was back in December. Um, you were talking about some of the backgrounds, Joe, and you're like, well, at least we're not. Uh, you know, selling boner pills yet. And <laughs> Jonah heard the call and uh, yes. immediately sent this in. And uh, we've been saving it for your birthday. So happy birthday. So we can uh, we can restore virility. And uh, what else you got on there? Derived, uh, derived from, from a vinous, uh, finest mercury vapors. Oh, those are good. Yeah. Spelled with the English and spelling. Yeah. That. And then uh, it also alleviates consumption. I, I, re I realize I'm yeah. going yeah. the wrong way this entire time. Great. Yeah. I'm really good at this. Nick good. might need those boner pills for his wiener after the well, show tonight. as I mentioned, it's really rubbery and, and uh, stressful <laughs> yeah, very right now. Yeah. I think but this is like... one, Judah didn't have anything to um, specific to promote. It's more of a thank you uh, to you guys and for the viewers of, uh, Thanks, of the Judah. show. It oh, meant a lot to uh, him and his wife over the past year. So They're the oh, best. Thanks. Thanks, Judah. With, yes. With any luck, we'll be promoting Blue Apron in a couple weeks. So it's, <laughs> it starts with boner pills and it's a great Stamps.com, program. here we come. <laughs> Uh, all right, what do we want to do now? Let's do uh, This Week in Flying Windows. Okay. Now, we said we would only do This Week in Flying Windows on special occasions when we had a good one. We kind of semi-retired it at the end of the year with the montage of Flying Windows within Flying Windows that Robert put together. This one was too good, though. Neil sent this in. It's from ESPN Lat uh, Latino or something like that, ESPN. And uh, so it was in Spanish and it was from the, uh, I think the late eighties. And man, you're gonna be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of flying windows in this. ESPN, leader americano na transmissão de esportes, está agora disponível para audiências em todo mundo. No passar dos anos, ESPN ficou conhecida por sua ampla diversidade e sua extensiva cobertura dos maiores e melhores eventos esportivos, dos quais podemos destacar rock, automobilismo, boxe, futebol americano, golfe, basquete, surf e tênis. Agora, estes yeah, programas emocionantes... And blows up. That's it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Variety of uh, sizes and... Uh, it was just a classic flying windows. I felt like we had to go back to basics in 2021. Yeah. So cool. Um, all right. What's a... So birthday surprise number one? I put this in the schedule, yeah, because okay. the thing you requested more than anything for your birthday show was other people's discomfort. Yes. I think... Um, like King Joffrey, that's what brings you the most pleasure. Exactly. I like seeing discomfort. I'm a big fan of that. Just like the people in the Dr. Sternholm video sitting yeah. there uncomfortably while Sternholm walks away. It's my favorite thing in the world. So I put together a seven part segment tonight that we're going to watch in chunks. <laughs> and uh, we'll I'm just let the first one already. We're going to um, hear from uh, people you may recognize. So mm -hmm. here's part one. All right. When we were in college, I told Joe that I didn't know how to swim, and he proceeded to bully me for a long time about jumping off the high dive at the local pool. So I finally did it, and it was incredibly 
uh, like traumatic for me, but I also felt a sense of pride that I had conquered my fear and jumped off this high dive. And I walked up to Joe afterward and he said, yeah, like uh, your form was pretty bad. Like that was a pretty shitty dive that you did. There was this one time in college where he bet me $20 to wear a little kid's sailor suit and walk from our dorm to the women's dorm with it on. And I was willing to do that, which of course made him mad. So he sat on top of me and drew a mustache with a Sharpie on my upper lip, really badly drawn, and then claimed that that was part of the deal all along. And if I didn't still do it, he wouldn't give me the $20. And that mustache stayed on my upper lip for days afterwards. He's never satisfied. Joe was just never satisfied. One time in college, I got home from class and I was really hungry. So I proceeded to eat an entire package of hot dogs by myself. And um, I was by myself. I didn't have to tell anyone about this, but I thought it was kind of funny. I was being self-deprecating. So I told Joe that I ate an entire pack of hot dogs. And for like the next 10 years, every like occasion, like Christmas, birthdays, whatever, he would give me like hot dog related gifts. And finally, like we were in like in our late twenties and he did it again. And I had to like finally tell him, I'm like, I've been a good sport about this for a long time, but I think it's time for you to stop giving me hot dog related gifts. And I could tell that he was like kind of disappointed about it. And he made me feel really guilty about it on my birthday the fact that like I didn't still want to be mocked for something that happened 10 years earlier on my birthday. So those are the two things that come to mind with Joe. Again, I love you. Have a great birthday. Take care. Happy birthday, Joe. You're so annoying. Part one of a well, seven part series. I don't even remember the sailor suit thing. That sounds right, <laughs> but I don't even remember that one at all. I should mention, these are all true stories. I know that people, you know, I don't know, they might think that this is a bit. No, these are all true stories. And also, I when Steve said at the end, take care, I'm like, I should probably cut that out or you're going to get mocked again by Joe for saying take care at the end of your video. And he said, just leave it in. Uh, but I... Like, honestly, if you had seen the way he jumped off the high dive, he was a grown man. There was this little girl that was doing backflips off of it that was like six years old, and he jumped off so scared and just jumped off. If you guys could have seen it, it was hilarious. Cell phones weren't invented then, so I can't play it. Uh, if only. All right, well, many, many more stories to come. Um, hey, I don't know about you, Nick, but I have a girthy selection of raviolis, and I can't wait to serve them up for you. All right. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Thank you, Dale, for sending in that uh, ravioli intro that would irritate Nick. If you guys have a ravioli intro that would irritate Nick, email me, joe at foundfootagefest.com, and just. Um, go to hell, Dale. <laughs> All right, well, you're the birthday boy. Do you want to go first? Yes, I'd like to uh, start things off with a little tedious. There we go. Yep. I think tedium is the slowest one. Although it could be argued that corner is the slowest one, even though it has the shortest distance to go. Yeah, I'd like to time that out someday. You should sometime, actually. George, you want to get on that? Kind of a fun activity. Yeah. Get a stopwatch out. Crank it up! So, Nick, last Thursday for our EP mode, which is our Thursday night show for $10 and up patrons, Nick, we watched The Modern Goat. The Modern Goat. We so did. So let me just, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is The Modern Goat. And a uh, very homemade movie or video about, about raising a modern goat. Um, and I did, I'd never seen it before. I'd never seen the whole thing. And I didn't realize how much tedium was involved in this, especially the introduction. The introduction is so tedious. 
because of the music and because of the speed of the credits. And I'm just going to play it because it's so good. I say, by the way, I say this every time, but we, this was my favorite EP mode episode we did. We had our buddy JC join us for it at the last minute, like mid show. And uh, EP mode, if you're a ten dollar and up patron, just join to watch this episode because you get to watch more of this video. That is and, just and also, I think JC told a story about me being annoying in it too. So if you're a big fan of stories about me being annoying, JC tells one of those stories in that EP mode. So here's uh, Joe's Tedium Corner, the Modern Goat opening credits. This song is played seven to ten times in the video. I love the font and the colors. Video toaster transition. Love that transition. Volume one. Does that apply to a volume two? It does. I want to get that tattooed across my chest. That's what I thought for. In that font? Yeah. Yeah. Look at it. Do you guys want me to slow it down? Are you able to read it? This crawl is slower than Joe's Tedium Corner. I was going to say, I can see the inspiration for... Uh... You're taking notes. Are there any misspellings? There was one, I think we found. Oh, techniques. Fencing techniques. Yes, yep. yeah. Techniques. Techniques. Goat. <laughs> if you guys need me to pause it, I'd be happy to. Can you pause it while keeping the music going? I can't. Oh, the technology's yeah. not there yet. Mm. And it goes all the way to the end of area. Crank it up. Yes. All right, that was it. Yeah, and then there was a long gap, and then Randy Atkins, the host, came out. So, yeah, go to uh, our Patreon.com slash Found Footage Festival. You can watch that one. I it was, was in tears was really, during that I was one. too. It, yeah. There's just so many perplexing decisions in that in that and then there's a lot of footage of goats too if you're I, into that. I think dr sternholm directed it actually <laughs> let's uh <laughs> let's look, watch um another um moments of discomfort this Ooh. is a uh, another one from i love these i'm a big fan of these we should yeah, use every week we talked about uh, jc uh, a friend of ours and another friend uh, uh justin is in this episode Times Joe has caused me discomfort. Um, you know, there are hundreds of these and I couldn't pick just one. So I actually have two today. Um, the first was sharing a hotel with Joe, three in the morning, very cranky, very tired, just wanted to get to bed. But Joe, being the friend he is, uh, kept waking me up every couple of minutes to let me know that there was a squirrel on the TV. One I can remember fondly, um when I went on tour with found footage in Seattle a few years back and we were driving around in a rental car in the pouring rain in Seattle. It's a new city. Uh, didn't know how to navigate it. I was very stressed out. I uh, just flown across the country and Joe thought the best way to help would be to um, blare AM radio static as loud as he could go in and out, you know, like, ah! Uh, you know, just over and over and over again until um, I snapped at him and made him turn it off or uh, threatened to go home all the way back to the East Coast. On a road trip with Joe, uh, Joe driving, me stuck in the back seat. Joe played the DJ the entire trip uh, by playing a CD called Two Live Jews, um, which is like a seventh rate Weird Al wannabe parody album. Um, that's, uh, it was disco music, but with like a humorous Jewish theme. And this was at ear piercing volume through the shitty rental car stereo system, just ear bleeding treble. Most of these things happened in the car with Joe. Um, another time happened when we went to the Super Bowl in Arizona a few years ago. And we, um, on our drive back to our hotel through the desert, through hours of desert, Joe, Knew I was, had, you know, I'd been a long trip, the game was over, I'd flown across the country again, and he knew he could really get at me by saying he would, he would stop at every large hill in the desert and say, let's climb up that hill. And I, and I would say, Joe, I don't want to climb up the fucking hill. I just want to, I just want to get to the hotel. And he said, come on, just climb up the hill. 
And we'd go about this and they'd stop at the next hill. And I said, come on, let's climb up that hill. And I said, I finally said, fine, fuck it, let's climb up the hill. And then, and of course, he just kept driving because he didn't want to climb up the hill. He just wanted to uh, piss me off. Um, so that is, um, that's Joe. Um, I love him and um, hate him. Those are the two times that come to mind out of many hundreds, if not thousands. Happy birthday, buddy. Ah, uh, I remember a couple mark. of those things. It's, it's funny, like, how I remember, like, half of them. I don't remember all of them. Most of them are just another day at the office, like climbing up hills and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, just part of the general irritating nature. I, like it's, it's, but I think the, the common theme I've gotten so far is it's hard for people to narrow it down. So um, <laughs> the, the thing I wanted to do for your birthday is because I know you uh, love orange cats. They're showbiz cats. You have two of them. Huge fan. And uh, so we have two uh, tapes that uh, I thought would come in handy here. First of all, we got Heathcliff. This is, uh, you know, I used to watch this cartoon. Our buddy had Heathcliff comic books, and um, I hadn't watched it in years, but I popped this in and uh, watched, I think, four episodes of Heathcliff on here. And our friends in England, they go by the name Eagle and Feather, um, have this other video also called Heathcliff, <laughs> which is Cliff Richard, who is a, you know, a, he's a English... He's celebrity like i think that he he's like or they're david hasselhoff maybe he had a few hit songs and then has since just kind of done vanity projects and been on tv a lot so he did a, a wuthering heights musical called heathcliff that he starred in and overacted in and uh so i thought i'd do keeping in mind with the orange cats theme something called heathcliff versus heathcliff tonight. love it Forgive what you have done to me, Kathy. And I will bear my banishment alone. I swear I will see you again if I shall live. And exact my revenge upon those who hate me. Soon we'll be back in your father's kingdom. Oh, I just know we will, Captain Heathcliff. Stage fight. Wuthering Heights. Is mine! Would not. What so? Would not. What so? Would not. What so? I cannot live without my life. I cannot live without my soul! Heathcliff versus Heathcliff. Oh, that was good. The, the, Heathcliff the Orange definitely won. I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So any day. yeah, we might do more because I, mean, I have the whole Heathcliff and I have a lot more to choose from. So I don't think that premise worth in at all. So <laughs> we got a lot more where that came from. Uh, all right. I want to play this. This is the, this is what I was talking about earlier that I've worked 12 hours on for one video, for one clip. And it's because it's so good. It's Natural Healing Crusades, Volume 3, Elimination, The First Step. And this guy, Dr. Schultz, I haven't done any research on him. I don't know anything about him. But it's Magical Rainbow Sponge meets More Proof meets Jonathan Bell. Oh it's a God. little bit of bad shit. It's a little bit of enthusiasm. It's a little bit of um, uh, like a weirdo. Um, and... Uh, Boy, it, it, this is this is a long edit. You know how hard montages are, Nick, especially yeah. with a standalone. It's it. This is almost two hours long. I watched it twice. I went through, and you you know normally after we do one of these montages, these standalone edits, that you don't know what's funny anymore. Everything was funny to me, and so I had the hardest time whittling it down. And then the next week, I'm going to just show some selects that hit the cutting room floor that I didn't do anything with because there's just so much good stuff. So um, this guy, I mean, you get the idea of what this is probably about. He's like a new age kind of guy. He has herbal medicines and uh, he helps you take shits, I guess. And he's just, he's, he's really into it. He's like into it, maybe a little too much. Great. You guys ready? Let's do it. You think you got it? You got your ears on? <laughs> 
starts off with a warning. Our constitutional <laughs> right to free speech and the freedom of press. And also spit on by lawyers. Also free speech capitalized. And why is that, Nick? You you have a... Uh, for emphasis. That's how because capitalization those, works. Those, th those are the important words. Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly. That's, right. that's the rules of, of uh, capitalization. This is the first thing you see when you pop in the tape. Has been spit on by lawyers, judges, and certain politicians. Dr. Schultz can no longer speak his healing knowledge without fear of attack. <laughs> Poor guy. All he wants to do is help us. Therefore, we are forced. And Nick, why is forced? Important word. Important word. <laughs> Important word. Exactly. <laughs> to warn you that the following healing information, natural healing programs, is for educational purposes only. And educational purposes is capitalized. <laughs> Both important. Plural of formula. Formulae. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so here, it saved his... Uh, saved his the following video footage was captured live at a rare Dr. Schultz public appearance. He's in a forest, by the way. Okay, the bowel. <laughs> he's, in, he's watching himself? So I'm going to tell you a little bit of my bowel history. Every Sunday, my dad used to go in the bathroom to have his bowel movement. Sometimes I'd hear a little... Is his vest a magic eye? And Sorry. I... <laughs> I can't talk. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna a, ask. I think I, I think I saw a dolphin in his uh, when I crossed my eyes and looked at his vest. So write down your comments for the end. I, okay. I, th th I'm workshopping this one. Nobody else. This Got is it. not seen the light of day, and I just need to know what uh, which okay. parts are funny. Okay. <laughs> that guy's there for the bell seminar. All right, here we go. Okay, the bowel. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of my bowel history. Every Sunday, my dad used to go in the bathroom to have his bowel movement. Sometimes I'd hear a little, and I'd go in for my bowel movement. And I would go in, and it was like a green cloud, you know, a toxic waste dump in there. And then I would have my bowel movement. I remember sometimes it wouldn't come out. And when it did, it was kind of like, I never saw anything float. And my dad would wipe me and he'd go, look, nothing on the paper. That's a good bowel movement. I remember once I pooped in my pants in school and I just left it in all day. And that to me was pooping. So what I did is I traveled all around the world in search of the perfect bowel movement. I have to stand up here and talk to all you middle-aged people about pooping. It's very enlightening when you run a clinic and you hear, start hearing the bowel stories. I had a young lady come to me. She said a bowel movement came out of him as long as from her fingertips to her elbow, as big around as her forearm. She said that once it was in the toilet, they couldn't flush it down. Her husband had to get a shovel out of the garage and chop it up. I love bowel stories. There's no stool in the toilet, just a gigantic tapeworm. Oh, I got a lot of worm stories for you. And I'm sure some of you have some too. Wanna to hear about some worms? The fettuccine type worms. We've had all sorts of worm stories and a toilet bowl full of worms. We had one lady have a tapeworm almost 30 feet long. Um, Poop was bubbling out of the ground. Pooping and more poop and more poop and more <laughs> poop. Pooped in the French sinks, like pooping in space. Dirty or a nasty poo poo, you did a bad one. And go in with her fingers and dig it out and remove the fecal matter that had dried inside her so your wet, drippy fecal matter can come out into it. Hot liquid stool. <laughs> Excuse me. Diarrhea, hot, burning, lots of stomach pain, some bleeding. And hot fecal matter went all over her dress and all over her boyfriend. She said, I didn't have any bowel movements right away, but I was sure throwing up. Where the poop comes out the vagina, I've heard that story 15 times. They found fecal matter backed up into its stomach. One day it vomited fecal matter. Does everybody in natural healing have a poop fetish or something? <clears throat> I think that's his most aware the most awareness that he has i think they all have like a poop fetish don't you think he's like enjoying this i mean it seemed like the urine convention those people had a urine fetish of some sort you yeah. know uh so yeah i do think he's enjoying it okay here we go does everybody in natural healing have a poop fetish or something <clears throat> much 
Drink this actually water. happened. Okay, so by the way, I didn't alter this at all. This actually happened in the video. Okay. They didn't edit this out. <laughs> okay. Constipation. I want to guarantee your bowel works tomorrow morning. One bowel movement every three to five days. That's what we teach our kids. One bowel movement a month. Two bowel movements a year. One or two poops. Three bowel movements. Two to three bowel movements a day. Six bowel movements in a year. Five bowel movements in one year. Ten. 15 bowel movements a day, 21 bowel movements a week, 120 bowel movements in her entire life. Uh, hey, lover. Then this kid comes out what? in this really weird section. He reads the kid a book, and he calls this kid lover when he comes I out. Know, I heard that. <laughs> really bothered me. Uh, hey, lover. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Hey, clapping. Can we clap? Yes. I love you. Yeah. See, look, that Missy over here. Yeah. <laughs> I see mommy. Back to the rest of the children. I love the you. Corn. I love you. One woman, one woman looked to see if, if what? Yeah, one woman looked to see if Lover was was all the way out yet. <laughs> oh, maybe that's took name. a photo. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, oh, but takes oh, a photo yeah. of Lover. Is oh, that's what that's what she was doing. Yep. Oh, maybe maybe that's the kid's name is Lover. That would make more sense, actually. No, it wouldn't. No. <laughs> that would be more disturbing. I see mommy. <laughs> That's I a love great you. picture in the back. I'll... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a great picture of the back of Lover's head. <laughs> I want doubles of that one. <laughs> From really oh. far away. <laughs> that was like that was when his son Lover came up and um, he kissed him and told him he loved him. A point I, shoot I didn't camera. Get that, I didn't get that shot, but I got one as he was leaving. <laughs> A point shoot camera from 1993. Sure it's a look click. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Yeah. I see mommy. No flat. I love you. <laughs> I, love yeah. you. Mm, I love you. Daddy. Okay. Oh, I love being a dad. <laughs> Come on up, man. <laughs> This is Mac. Uh, after going through the program, I didn't feel that I had a complete bowel movement. So I continued on and kept going on until after the end result was actually, I don't know how many feet this is. Well, a bathtub is about five feet long. <laughs> and it longer. That's actually not stressed out. It's wrong. Yes. And then you have about only two or three inches on each side. Wait, wait. Was, was that, that double tapered? <laughs> Is that is that our thumbnail for the show tonight? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Where's George Brett when you need Steve, him? What, Steve, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? Just look, it's I, my birthday, Steve. Just look at it. It's my birthday. See this? I can <laughs> make a new video. I like about. Dr. Scholl's being, do it like, let's do the math. A bathtub is five feet long. Now you take a few inches on either side of that. It's on each side. So, you know, and it's curved. So we're looking at five feet, maybe more. Yeah, then and, and, and it kept coming and it kept coming and it kept coming until uh, at the end result, I, I felt a big relief. I, I really felt like I could fly. Let's give him a little uh, appreciation for sitting on that floor. This is how the video ends, too. That's how the it ends with that guy's testimonial. Oh, volume three. What's the next step? Well, Bob Bob Hedges sent it to us and. Uh, oh. And he, he was said he was he was messaging me some clips from it. I was like, oh, can you please send that? He FedExed it to me. <laughs> he overnighted it.
<laughs> it has arrived the other day in time for the show. So I was able oh. to, yeah. Uh, but he, he also got all the other volumes. There's like 15 volumes in there. And oh, that was my next more. question. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure that Bob will report this week when he's on his treadmill watching. Uh, wow, you built it up a lot, but it, it was it's exceeded my expectations. I mean, video of the year? Can, can we stop doing the show now in January? <laughs> it's up there. Just wait until next year, and it, then we got video of the year. Why even try? Definitely up there. Let's, uh, let's have another um, moment. Let's pause yes. for another moment. This one, you might be wondering, okay, Joe does this with friends he's known for all his life, but surely he draws the line at family members. Nope. Here we go. First of all, if you're seated in the back seat with him, um, his, his natural seated position is spread eagle. So doesn't matter who it is. Um, at some point, he will flop his legs over and invade your personal space. Um, which really sums Joe up, you know, his comfort comes at the expense of somebody else's. Uh, anytime I've slept in a room with Joe, his snoring has kept me up all night, even if I'm in like near a room where Joe's sleeping, his snoring, uh, keeps me up all night, uh, and his farting keeps me up all night. Yeah, there was the one time, um, I was pregnant with our son a few years ago and uh, I had pretty bad morning sickness. And on Christmas morning, Joe decided to break open one of those um, get gift uh, fart bombs in the house as we were opening gifts. And this smell was so bad that I was dry heaving and gagging. I had to go outside in the cold, snowy uh, weather and wait until the smell cleared away from the house before I could go back in. He's always in control of the radio too. Um, which is fine the first couple of hours. Um, you'll have, you know, normal music, but then eventually he will, you know, flip to a contemporary country station and he'll have to analyze the lyrics of every song, um, you know, or he'll find a, a, a bad CD at a truck stop and overplay it. Um, I know one of our friends once got to the point where he had to eject the CD and he smashed it in his hands and threw it out the window uh, on the interstate. And uh, any time I've uh, played a game with him, pretty much, any time I've beaten him in a game, uh, he, he makes me very uncomfortable by how he reacts to the loss. Once I beat him in ping pong and he didn't say anything for a second and then just whipped the paddle uh, at the wall and the handle stuck in to the wall uh, and we were quiet for a while and then we just like walked upstairs at our parents house. I think my biggest pet peeve personally is uh, his truck stop um, visits which are always a minimum of a half an hour. Um, my strategy is I try to um, say nothing but then eventually I have to because I'm getting so annoyed. Uh, but as soon as he sees that you want to go and that you're annoyed, he will take even longer. So um, best to just keep that to yourself. Ah, uh, yes. So many. Good stuff. So many. Good stuff. Well, we're talking about multi-part series, and this is one that I immediately thought of for your birthday show. It's one that made the best of the year oh, list. Oh, yes. I texted you the other day, and I was like, can you please do Close Proximity? And you did it? Yep, this is a yes. this is a special birthday edit of Beginner's Guide to Close Proximity Pyrotechnics starring Amanda McLean. Now, I also looked, and this is, says volume 44. There are over 50, <laughs> 50 volumes of how-to pyrotechnics <laughs> videos. Um, only This is the only one I found that she hosts, and I love her so much. I, I almost don't want to spend $25 to buy another one on the off chance it's, it's not as just, electric. Just, just buy one. Just buy one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah, well, that will, maybe we can group source which one to buy oh, on a future episode. I'm so excited about this. So I love the graphic design on this. Um, and of course, this starts off, you know, it's a, it's a fireworks how-to thing. And so it starts off with a bang. This one, I just highlighted what I call funky transitions. <laughs> production. 
Northland Fireworks News. I left the opening exactly as it was, by the way. Just into the next thing, I left exactly how it was. See, I had no idea this was catalog v, V9Q. Yeah. See, I added that to this as That's well. That's great. How the pros. The full intro. How, how the pros. Explain beginners to close proximity tech pyrotechnics. I'm in theater since I was 14. And I've been working with close. That's how it begins. In theater, since I was, it's like begins with her mid sentence. Uh, but also, when, you, when you're talking about your resume, you don't talk about stuff you did when you were 14. When yeah, you're an adult, do you? Do you? Leave that stuff off. I'm in theater since I was 14, and I've been working with close proximity for 25 years. Uh, the last many years, I've been working over in Europe. The most important thing in Take close shell. proximity pyrotechnics, for every inch diameter of a shell, you have to have 70 feet safety distance. For close proximity, you have a whole different situation, different situations, different problems. Um, but what would you say? Star Wars clock wipe. Oh. I think the editor, I don't know if he just was like, God, this is dull. I have to spice it up. So every transition is different. There, aren't, there weren't two of the same. And by the way, this is definitely directed by Dr. Sternholm. This is, yeah. this is his aesthetic. Like, this is his style. I know. He probably gave her a pusher. <laughs> Some problems. Um, but what would you say are the main differences? They don't want you getting anywhere around them. Um, you have to just find out yourselves what your state requires, if you need a license there or not. But we you will Sam. need evidence of insurance. He's distracted. So is everybody else. But there are other differences with the effects. But this is how, this is one of the differences, particles up around. So you said, OK, now you've told us all these really bad things that can happen. And you can see, normally, the front of a stage containers and in, in bags for that reason. As long as you stay away, static cannot cause a problem. It doesn't make that spark. The main thing Where's is going? Uh, different things like that. There's a lot of things, and that's the thing you have to outfit. maintain all the time. And it's important, and please, I hope you all have something with you. Please, Wednesday, when you come, you need to wear was she distracted by the people coming in? Yes. Right there. She was, so is everybody else. <laughs> Maybe Maintain all that door. <laughs> I assume they were coming for the fireworks con time explanation, but they got there late, maybe after late. lunch. Yeah. yeah. And it's important, and please, I hope you all have something with you. Please, Wednesday, when you come, you need to wear cotton. You need to not wear synthetics because synthetics build up a static charge like this turf. Do not wear shorts. <laughs> and there's... Oh, so good. There's close proximity fireworks. It, it, but in the, also, there's one person's head that's right in the frame. The back of somebody's head is right in frame throughout the yes. entire thing. Yeah, throughout the entire yeah. video. Yep. There's a lot to unpack in that video. But, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, you know what? I'm going to put up some some suggestions maybe next week of the next one to order. And this one was like at a Goodwill, but you know, we'll pay the money. Cause Is it's that 25 good. bucks. Okay. They're 25 bucks. Yeah. Um, Nick, those raviolis were fantastic. My only complaint is I think last week I asked that all of our raviolis be surgery related and yeah. I didn't see one single surgery video in there at all. So, but it's fine. It's cool. Yeah. It's I'm going to, I'm going to say that's a birthday gift to the viewers. <laughs> And yeah. that's show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. All right, now's the time in the show where I throw it at George. And George, because it's my birthday, I want you to uh, introduce the next segment. This is the segment in which we explain to you, the viewer, how to watch cyber videos on the internet. <laughs> we get into those i think it's time for another moments of discomfort Ooh. segment and this one big fan we, we've seen family members who are aggrieved we've seen close friends who are aggrieved but what about coworkers? what about people you need to work with you're trying to get a some teamwork done oh, i don't have a job 
Yeah, but as close to coworkers as you get. Okay. Let, let's see how they are affected. Has Joe ever done anything to make me feel uncomfortable? Uh, almost every day, almost every interaction. Um, I mean, one of the worst ones that jumped to mind was when uh, Kurt Braunohl was on the show and he decided to tell not only him, but the entire audience um, about my bathroom breaks at Disney. And then every time Steve would go to the bathroom, I'd take pictures of Steve going to the bathroom. He went to the bathroom a lot that day. And there he is, in the stall next to him. That was like, memories. Yeah, and then... Uh, Who are you, Dr. Schultz? That, yeah, then he caught on and started taking pictures back of me. But you notice that's a different floor. Same day, different floor. Like, that's right. a double dump day at Disney. Yeah, thanks for being a friend, Joe. I suspect uh, one or two people may have fallen foul of this classic of Joe's. Um, I was on tour with the guys in 2014 throughout the Midwest, and we uh, went into a gas station, or petrol station, as I call it, and um, unbeknownst to me, Joe uh, had slipped one of the gas station hot dogs. Just slipped into my pocket, uh, making me the unwitting shoplifter that I'd always dreamed of being. Um, and I got in the car, and oh look, there's a gas station hot dog. I um, sought my revenge by, in the next show, I taped the very, I held on to the hot dog for three days and then taped it to his microphone uh, for when he went on stage. He picked it up, a flurry of disgust and surprise. Um, and then uh, after the show, uh, he rugby tackled me in, or, or, or football tackled me, American football tackled me in front of everyone. Uh, at the merch table, which really doubled down on the misery. I've hidden my face and voice for fear of retaliation, but I do want to bring up the time that Joe really, really embarrassed me and hurt my feelings by hiding a hot dog in my pocket. I mean, what kind of human being does that to another human being? Just puts a hot dog in their pocket. It's a cruel, cruel world. Almost everything Joe does causes me discomfort. <laughs> oh man! Moments in discomfort. I want to know who that mystery guy was. <laughs> I'll never figure looks, it out. Oh man, he never gave me the satisfaction knowing that I put that hot dog in his pocket. No, whoever that no. mystery guy was, he never I, did. No, I have a few ideas who it was, but I don't <laughs> oh, know. Yeah. Just gonna own up Your to Rolodex it. of coworkers. <laughs> I want to get to. There's I know like three. <laughs> you uh, you love jingles, so I wanted to get to. Um, a jingle that was sent to me a couple of weeks ago by Christopher that I thought was phenomenal. And what's great about this commercial is you see what was on before leading into the commercial and the commercial that came on after it. So it's a little bit before and after, and then an amazing jingle for oh, I can't a wait. Cat Skills Game Ranch. It's the best birthday ever. You'll find adventure. To the animals and you'll see just whisper in their ear you'll be surprised just what they know ask any llama or deer buffaloes are in the know they shout it loud and clear you'll find adventure hey do you like to take pictures all right well do you know somebody who likes to take pictures oh boy have i got good news for you all right, so that's uh, <laughs> it was right after Days of Our Lives. That's and Bernie. such a Bernie. That guy's yeah. so Bernie. Yeah. Yeah. Georgia, what do you have for us today? Well, I say, George, George is gonna. George, are you gonna go after me? I'm gonna go after you. Oh, okay. okay. Well, let's yeah, let's yeah, go let's to Steve, Steve next. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I am doing IMGs uh, for Joe's birthday. Um, oh. An IMG for those of you who don't know, it's something. Um, this it was either good. accidentally uploaded or um, someone didn't even care enough about the video to change its name. So it comes up with IMG, the image, and then whatever number it was. So wow, I chose. That was a good introduction. Concise. Showing you I up. Chose, <laughs> I'm going to write that down, Steve. Say that again. How does yeah. that go? Good, good luck. How does uh, that go? But I chose a couple different uh, IMGs for 045. So um, here's the oh, oh, first one. Okay. 0045. You need four numbers. So 0045. No, I just did 045. Did I didn't 045? even know that. This, oh, okay. is new. this, this right. came up for well, 045. I didn't know that you could do that. You could do three numbers. Wow. wow. All right. You're breaking the rules. But well, I broke what? the rules. And so here's the first one. <laughs> 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 
Some, some subtitles are in English. Some are in I don't know what language that. No was. explanation. No nothing. All I know oh. is it had three views. Someone must have been using their camera to tape it off of. Uh, I don't know what. Oh, Excelsior! <laughs> and then the second one. Um, I don't know why I thought Joe would really like this one. This one had uh, more views, but I think it was around forty. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, it goes on like this for another 20 seconds or so. so oh, uh, that's a hell of an IMG. Let it great. play. Let it play. I want to see the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I, I'll send, send, send it send to that you. One. Please send right. that one to me. That's yeah. definitely going in uh, quarter one report in uh, February. That one is outstanding. Whew. All right. Wow. I got to follow up those IMGs. I actually have some pretty good ones. Well, you don't um, have to explain what they are. So you're off the hook. Yes. Thank you. This is, this is the best birthday ever. It really is. <laughs> you can the terms that people love to see. It's IMG minus. Locks are done. Got to sleep. Bye. IMG 1441. This was sent in by Elizabeth. I had five views. She called it Snack Test Dummies which I thought was a great title. But mm -hmm. then she emailed me the next day saying that she didn't love her title. And she wrote, I'm wondering if there's some element of competition between the East and West here, kind of like in the automotive industry with the Eastern product besting the Western version yet again, or maybe I'm overthinking it. A little bit of tedium. Mm -hmm. A lot of tedium. But you might get a little bit of action here. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see where the IMG takes us. They're overinflated. Yeah! <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Wait, there's more. I thought Snack Test Dummies. I thought that was a good one. Mm-hmm. That is good. Yeah. Well, look at only two of two products I'm not familiar with. Louis light, Louis light. Watch, this, watch this surprise ending. Surprise ending here. Oh, a little bonus. <laughs> a little bonus. I feel like they should have gone with the, the, the chips second. You know? I agree. More explosive. The, yeah. But Elizabeth, Snack Test Dummies, I thought was a great title. Stick mm -hmm. with that one. Don't overthink it. All right, IMG 1006. Ross from St. Louis, he sent this one. Uh, his, his title was, well, it was more of an explanation. Chicken costumed person wishing happy birthday at office with the best voice. I actually cried laughing with this one. Reminds me of the Dirt Cheap Chicken. Do you guys remember Dirt Cheap Chicken? Yes. Cheap, yeah. cheap. Do you remember that? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay. uh, this is this is a birthday edition one. So here's uh, thank you, Ross. What's going on? I said I'm coming in, so you better get this party started. I'm coming in, you better. I'm coming in, so you better get this party started. Johnny, baby. It's got to hurt the chicken's voice. I was going right? to say the same thing. It's yeah. got to just be like bleeding right now. Nice. <laughs> you think it'd be over like now, get handed over the presents and then, all right, I'm out of here. <laughs> Always funnier in theory. What? They're always funnier in theory to get like a candy gram or whatever it is. You know? What do you think it costs? Like two hundred bucks or something? 
Probably, yeah, yeah singing yeah. messenger. Everybody chipped in. All right. <laughs> yeah, you should bring alcohol. Go, 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 go. I said, go, Johnny, go, go, go. Johnny, right, you're go. Good, you're good. No, I'm you're not good. good. Yeah, no, we're going to sing. You're good. You're good. <laughs> he, he, probably, he probably has work to do. Yeah, yeah. Help me out. Come on! Here, everybody in here! Here we go! One, two, one, two, three, four. Say, buddy, do, da. Say, buddy, gone with the song of the South. Well, wouldn't have gone with the song of the South song, but maybe uh, yeah. happy birthday. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't, sure. I don't want to tell the chicken how to do his job, but uh... two hundred to have the chicken show up. Two hundred more to have him leave. <laughs> Great business plan. <laughs> it doesn't end. I think he's had enough. Okay. Even though Are you in the suit? I guess it's my question. <laughs> Deliberately irritating a coworker for far too long. Even huh. people behind the camera are like, all right, I think he's had enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's probably still going on right now. <laughs> like wherever that was. Yeah, maybe maybe working from home isn't such a bad thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. All right. Last one is a short one. IMG1438. Roboito sent this one in. Roboito, of course, you know what Roboito brought us. Taco Bell game. Yeah. One of the greatest videos, I'm going to go ahead and say, of all time. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> not only IMGs, but wow. videos of all time. <laughs> wow. I actually feel like watching it right now. Uh, <laughs> he called this one uh, uh, Aussie Burper. Impressive. Yeah, there we go. That's the birthday edition cyber videos. Can I can I just play one real quick thing? I just <laughs> just I just the forced burp. Do you guys know this about me? That I actually hate burps worse than I hate farts. Like I yes, hate burps. Because you tell people that like unprompted. Have I have I mentioned this on the show though? I, I thought we had a so. spinoff of. Uh, th didn't we have a like a which is two worse. hour special about you doing both at some point? Do you, yeah, it's do called you, Which is Worse. Yeah. Oh, okay, and you guys, you guys knew about this, Steve. You knew about this, George. You knew about this. That I, I guessed didn't... it. Okay, all right. Yeah. It's the forced burp that I really hate. Like, look at. I'm just gonna play the part where he forces the burp, which bothers me a lot. Look at. I'm, I'm equal opportunity discomfort. This is dis discomforting to me too. So. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's the oh, end you're of the just burp. playing the end. Where just he's the part where he's forcing the burp at the end. Yeah. Okay, that's it. See, it surprises me that you're not into burps because anytime like somebody is uh, talking in a video and like in the um, earlier one with the um, the step one, um, he, he, he takes a sip and then he just burps right beforehand. You always would put that into a cut. And get excited about that moment. Yeah, well, yeah, I think burps are, yeah, I, I don't want to be present around a burp because it's the smell that bothers me of the burps more than anything. That's the reason that I don't like burps. It's like fart smells, I can handle a fart smell because farts always smell like farts, but like burps always smell like what they ate just a little while ago, and that bothers me way more. I feel like Joe got his wish there that yeah. I, I asked the question. You got to talk about it. I want to remind everybody that uh, we're supported by Patreon at patreon.com slash found footage festival. You right know, on who, schedule. you know who else uh, forces his burps is our childhood friend since, you know, me 12 years old, Joe, I think you've known him since he was 10, Tom Jacobson. And, um, you know, I asked people to send in times Joe has made them uncomfortable and everybody got him in. And uh, guess who forgot? Oh, Jakester? Yeah, Jakester, who shares your birthday. He, this should not have... Uh, <sighs> this, this forgot. Is not, yeah. So I, I hounded him today, and he sent in these. Never, ever, ever go through a drive through uh, when you're driving and he's in the passenger seat. Um, when it's your turn to, to place your order... 
at the speaker, um, he finds the most inappropriate songs to blare while you're trying to give your order. He'll also reach over, try and honk the horn, as well as scream at the top of his lungs. Um, and so you usually end up getting your order, giving your order uh, like four or five times. And then uh, the worst part is when you have to turn the corner and actually face the poor teenager who took your order. Back when Nick first moved out to New York and me and Joe were still in Wisconsin, this was late 90s or whatever, um, Joe and I decided to take a road trip out to visit him. We had a Foreigner Greatest Hits CD for some reason that we were listening to. Anyway, I started showing signs of weakness and uh, Joe decided to put Cold as Ice on loop for about 25 times. And uh, I finally had snapped and uh, he wouldn't let me take the CD out and fought and fought and fought. And finally I got my hands on it and I crushed it and threw it out the window. Uh, little victory for me. There's not very many um, when it comes to Joe's irritability. One night we were just hanging out and Joe saw the camcorder was out. And so he decided to grab the camcorder and he hit record and I knew what tape was in there. It was my nephew's first birth or first Christmas um, that he was taping over. And I started freaking out because I'm like, my sister's gonna be so pissed. And uh, I'm telling him, stop it, stop it, stop it, please. I'm begging him. And he just keeps doing it. And so we start chasing, I start chasing him around the island and basically threatening him and telling him to get the fuck out. And meanwhile, he's laughing so hard that he's shaking the camera like this. You can just see it. And um, I'm throwing dish towels at him, just whatever I can do to try and make him stop. <laughs> he really got a rise out of me that night. And uh, mission accomplished, Joe. You did, you did great there. Um, I'll find the tape one day. I'm pretty sure my sister has it. And uh, I hope she doesn't watch it because that first four minutes of that tape are gonna be very confusing for her. Um, anyway, so happy birthday, you son of a bitch. That tape is out there somewhere. And Nick, you and I got to watch, we called it the Get Out Tape. Yeah. That, that's like one of our most coveted tapes. He's like, we... Joey, get out. Joey, get the F out. And I have the camcorder and I'm, I, I, he's right. I'm shaking, I'm laughing so hard. And then he, he looks around for something to throw at me and he finds a dish towel and he throws a dish towel at me, which <laughs> makes me laugh even harder. That tape is out there somewhere. And he, I think that he's holding on to it. I don't think, I think he's going to show it to me on my deathbed. Maybe. I mean, we're, uh, we're the found footage stuff. So the one tape we want to find, we can't. It's, it's just, the it's only just one. A great shame. So we'll, that's our mission. We're not going to quit until we find that. George, you had a cyber video though. Oh, I, uh, I had a few things. First off, for your birthday, Joe, I checked IMG 6969. Oh, good one. And what Central did I position. find? Yeah. Just about the perfect Joe IMG. 16 seconds, 11 views. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes! It's an actual 69! Yes, but watch it. Keep watching. Oh. <laughs> Where is that? I don't know. It's an IMG. Okay, so this is where things get a little are going to get a little weird. I'm going to say Italy. Uh, okay, it like yes. an Italy thing. Uh, I'm going to say Sweden. Okay. Okay. So let's face it; these are tough times for the USA, and not just at home. Our country's image has been has taken a hit abroad, and I think we can rebuild our national brand through cultural diplomacy by focusing on what we as a people are good at. Okay. Game shows. Yes. And what's our angle? IMGs. Mm -hmm. And who's our ambassador of IMGs? This guy. A certified IM genius, Mr. Joe Pickett. I am genius. Yes. A real American game show. IMGs are there. I am Joe. A real American game show. IMGs are there. I am Joe. Whoa. Cool intro. Okay, so... It's very simple. I'll show you part of an IMG and you'll guess what happens next. We'll watch three IMGs all found by me in the space of 10 minutes. The whole point of this is to highlight just how unpredictable IMGs can be. Guys, are you ready for IMGs? Let's play. Yeah, but wait, 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 what do we have to do again? I'll pause it after a second and I'll ask you what happens next. Okay, got it. Okay. All right, bring it. Let's IM Joe. So IMG 0069. Okay. Hey, Lucy. Okay. 
seats. <laughs> okay, so what happens next? Joe, what do you think happens next? I think, like, uh, an old man walks in the door smoking a cigarette and then just, like, uh, and then gets mad at the cat and then the cat runs off. Like, Nick, what do you think happens? Okay. Uh, I'll say the cat goes attacks one of the shoes on the right-hand side. Steve? I think he throws it to the floor and the cat does nothing. Let's he watch. thinks that they're going to attack the... Uh, receipt but it won't happen is there a fountain on in the background <laughs> come here come here lucy bring it here whoa oh. she fetched it yeah she fetches receipts not just once. This goes on for several minutes. That cat, I've never seen wow. anything like it. So the correct answer was Maybe plays fetch with rolled up receipts. That girl. Hold on, okay. an old man might come to the door. Just wait a second. No, I watched the whole thing. Okay, all right. Well, how many views? Okay. Uh, I'll have to check. I think 11. So that's what I was going to say. Okay, so this is, now we're at double I am Joe. Okay. All right. IMG 6882. Okay. What happens next? Um, I'm going to say a chicken comes in with birthday balloons and uh, wishes them a happy birthday in a really high-pitched, screechy voice. Nick? They slap each other in the face at the same time. Steve? They do some sort of rendition of that In Excess video or The Love Actually where they show the signs and throw them away. Let's see. <laughs> what does it say? That was it. It's in Russian. 13 oh. views. Okay. The answer so was just... turns 90 degrees. Okay. So this is, this is it. This is final. I am Joe. This is multi-part. The category is both tedium and I'm excitement. So, I'm so embarrassed that I haven't got any of these right well, this I, this is it this is this okay. one is worth all the points so okay okay this is tedium excitement okay. img6451 all right okay what happens next okay it's tedium and uh tedium um part, part one you guys go first let me let me think about this for a second the uh clipboard hanger falls down and behind him oh, steve one. Oh, this is a tough one. Um, no idea. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna take off the. I think he's gonna take that off, and uh, uh, but it's tedium, so that would be excitement. What, what was the category, George? Tedium. It's tedium and six? excitement. Okay, so he's gonna take it off, and then you're gonna have to blur out his his wiener. Let's watch. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, <laughs> what happens next? Oh, oh, there's a, it's a bonus no, no, round. No, there's four parts to this one. Okay, uh, it actually explodes because there's a balloon under there. <laughs> that was going to be my guess. I'll say. It slowly deflates rather than pops. Steve? I think he goes straight through the shirt and the underpants. Just keeps going. Keeps expanding out. Let's watch. Who is this guy? I love him. <laughs> it's a good angle. Let's get screenshots from this, probably. I mean, that could be our screenshot. 
tonight's episode. Okay, so what happens next? Okay, all right. So it was tedium that happened at that point. So now I'm going to say it explodes because tedium happened at that first po- at that second juncture, and now now we're going to see some explosions. We're Again, this is part three of four. So all right. I'll say he I'll say he tries to explode it and it doesn't work. It like won't pop. Oh, good guess. Well, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to root again for uh, the underpants and or shirt exploding. Let's watch. <sighs> Basically, just do this. It's just a pillow. <laughs> Okay, now what happens? <laughs> His underwear falls down. His underwear falls down. It's been stretched out by the pillow. Uh, it turns out the pillow was a balloon the whole time it explodes. <laughs> he starts dancing. Here we go. Good game, yes. That's so good. What what was the number on that one again? Uh, I think it was six eight eight two. Off to yeah, block. that was All it. Right. Yeah. Six eight eight two. All right. And, yeah. I just, and I know we're going way long, but Joe, I, you this was a request by you, even though you didn't you didn't know it. Uh, I got you a b- band for your birthday. This is you get me a what a band. Uh, this is the first annual. I am Joe. I am Jam. <laughs> Have to do this, George. Better than stomp. Whoa. That was awesome. All from 0000 and 0069. Oh, man, that was brilliant. Well, we uh, I don't think we have time to open all the presents we got you, but there's one that says open last. Can you open that one on the air now? Sure, sure. I see that one. There's a bunch of presents here. And I'll, I'll open them, and then I'll show you what I got next week. What, what's the, what's the thing here? These, these oh, are all um, 80s Christmas special, TV Christmas special. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. All right. Here it is. Oh, this is going up right here. This is something. Look at that. <laughs> it's it's the Taco Bell. It's the Taco that Bell is video a, uh, IMG, the greatest video a, of all time that we all agreed on. That yeah. is a cu- <laughs> custom watercolor rendition of the IMG painting. No way. Uh, of the at... IMG of the Taco Bell game getting explained while well, the guy is holding two women's hands and the woman behind him is kind of lurking and trying to scold him. So. Oh, what do you think? Like right there? It looks pretty really good. nice right there. Yeah. yeah. Right between my two balloons. <laughs> yes, there it is. And that's how to watch cyber videos on the internet. <laughs> Open the present that's in a bag next to your... Uh, oh, this one right here? That's from my parents. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, it's a shirt. Here we go. Here we go. What does it say? Just looking for my ticket out of this hellhole. Nick and Joe 2020 VCR party live. Oh, man. I'm putting this on right now. This is um, so nice. That's actually a perfect lead-in to my uh, gift to you. 
Okay. Um, because what you're always looking for is a ticket out of this hellhole. So I got you a Russian McDonald's uh, application. That you can see it's oh, me trying to. I might have to turn off my uh, background for a second so I can show sorry, you. Sorry, Doctor oh, yeah. Judah. Yeah, sorry, Judah. Hold on. You can just second. deduct. You can just reimburse him for the money that he misses out on doing this whole thing. I will. Um, here, I'll just do it quickly. But uh, as you can see, it's you can be, you know, part of the, you can be basically the Russian mixie is what I want you to be. And you can even, you, there's a place for you to put your photo over here when you send it in. So it's say an application for a Russian McDonald's. So you could be their uh, mixie. Oh, that's, really? that's your ticket out of this hellhole. That's your ticket out of this hellhole. My parents sent that, um, that shirt to Joe. And I, I'm sure you're thinking, okay, sure. Brothers, friends, coworkers, Joe torments them all, but not his own parents. That he couldn't possibly, his parents are in their late sixties. They don't have, they don't deserve this, but you'd be wrong. Here's more moments of discomfort caused by Joe Piggott. Okay, I've got a lot of stories I could tell about Joe, but this is probably my very favorite one. About 20 years ago, I had a three hour surgery to remove a brain tumor. While I was in the recovery room, Since I received a phone call from John in billing. He was asking me for an insurance document and I told him I had already taken care of it ahead of time. He said he didn't have it and he insisted that I bring it down right then. He then transferred me to a supervisor who then repeated the demand for the document. I kept explaining to them, I, I, I just recovered from brain surgery. And they kept insisting that I need to bring it down. And I'm getting very frenzied and frazzled. And they kept transferring me back and forth to each other. At one point, they even asked me to fax the document down to them. And in my dazed state, I'm actually looking around the room for a fax machine. And I'm becoming more confused and panicky. And finally, Joe said, Dad, it's me. It's Christmas before last. And Joe was home and he was, um, it was after all the presents were opened and um, we were getting dinner ready. And I walked through the living room and Joe was on the floor playing with Harry, who's six, that's important, um, who's six. And there's a big red and white rope um, that they're playing with. And I didn't even really pay attention. And it was like, in a circle like a lasso on the floor but there was only one way for me to go into the kitchen so i went in and um i started going in and i step in the the lasso the snare not even really thinking and um as i pull my leg up joe pulls it and then that wasn't good enough so i didn't fall so he pulled it again and I fell on both knees and on my wrist and my, my grandson, the one he was playing with, Harry was six and ran over to make sure I was okay. And everybody did, but Joe, <laughs> he just sat there. So I had two skin knees, um, torn pants and, uh, um, I had ice on my wrist the rest of Christmas Day. So, again, he's in his 40s and was playing with his nephew, who's six. So, um, it was a great Christmas. Thanks, Joe. What is wrong with you? I can explain. You're a monster. I can explain everything on that one. And uh -huh. I do, definitely do regret it because I did a second poll. Because, you know, you got the kid there. You want some action. Right, you want to like pull, and you you. I don't have any problem. Oh, with that. that explains it. It's the empathy part afterwards. That's the actual. <laughs> well, part I was it. I was so stunned that it actually worked. That was the thing. I did, I couldn't believe that it actually worked, and she toppled over. I was like, oh, my lasso actually worked, and I was stunned by that. That's right. the reason, and I and I explained right. it to her several times. We talk <laughs> about it every Thanksgiving. You're like, I didn't realize my my snare for my 68 year old mother would work. <laughs> And how about confusing your father after brain surgery? <laughs> I mean, that was a classic. Nick had something to do with that one, though. Nick, you I you helped. were part of that too. I got, en yeah, I yeah. got enlisted.
Yeah, Nick 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 played the role of the insurance agent. He would get on too. So, but you know, you you sense some vulnerability, and you got to pounce, right? Yeah. I mean, for turn the screw, yeah, right, for comedic reasons. Yeah, that's what normal people do. <laughs> so uh, we got to get quickly into uh, the segment because it's timely. It's um, a viewer request. It's a segment we call "That It Had Done." <laughs> That's it. That it done. Right there. Lisa N. said her husband, Kevin, is a huge fan. He's been watching for years. He's turning 45 on Wednesday, and I was hoping you'd give him a shout out. Um, and she had a couple suggestions. One is happy birthday, Gene died in IMG. Oh, I have that. I have let's, that queued let's up. Play that, and then I'll yeah. play the one that she wanted after that. And I thought that was such a great idea for for future birthdays. Like that should be the birthday video, right? I mean, that should be the birthday IMG. This is IMG 0961, harvested by X A Smith, titled "Happy Birthday." Happy birthday to you. We love you, Cheyenne. Happy birthday. Hope it's awesome. Happy birthday, Shy Shy. Happy birthday. Love you. Uncle Gene passed away this morning. <laughs> that is a classic. And I'll just play this one really quickly because it was my special request for uh, Kevin here. This is um, a classic segment from a home movie that our buddies found called Memorial Day 2000. There's a certain catchphrase that one of the uh, revelers at the. Oh, show, I think I know what this is going to be. It's at a campground in Michigan. And uh, we think, well, we'll let her speak for herself. Did I do good, you guys? Oh, oh fuck yeah. yeah, you were the fucking whip shit of all fucking shitter bongers. <laughs> all right, so that's it. That phrase, uh, we've got it on mugs, t-shirts. It just worked its way into our lexicon. So happy 45th, Kevin. Um, that's that it had done. I have one more birthday surprise for you. Okay. So, um, this is a, a final um, moments of discomfort, and we've we've heard from friends we've heard from family members we've heard from coworkers, but surely I can't, be- I can't believe how many people you got to do this whole thing surely your own wife you wouldn't <laughs> you got her to do it you wouldn't torment her what? and somebody who's notoriously camera shy wouldn't oh i can't even wow all right this, here we go oh this should be good Joe kind of prides himself on testing the limits of people's patience. That's kind of like his, I think that's his goal in life, frankly. Um, He's a wonderful person who also happens to love friendly bullying. And I just call it friendly bullying because no one is really hurt by it. Yeah, your mom was. (laughs) But it isn't making your life better. Like if I'm asleep uh, on an airplane, there is, or like I'm asleep at all and my mouth is open, there will be a picture of me somewhere. He can't help it. Just don't tell her that I'm showing it because she would file for divorce. I guarantee uh, this is this is when I put uh, paper in her mouth on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> she would not be happy. There is this video that's on YouTube that's called, I think it's the Funky Monkey compilation. And it has, for my money, the most irritating soundtrack known to man. Yes. It is truly, it would drive you to full murder if you were it more than once. And he has more than once played it on some kind of Bluetooth system where it is, uh, it just plays and irritates the crap out of me. I can't even listen to like one second of it without getting irritated. Uh, But he has made sure to like, just by surprise, always have it kind of um, ready to play at any given moment. Um, It hasn't happened too often, but it has happened enough where like, it's now the countdown to how patient I am with hearing even the beginning notes of this song. 
is down to like 0.2 seconds. So that would be my discomfort thing, the funky monkey song. She hates it. And that's moments of discomfort. <laughs> Have you have you guys seen the Funky Monkey video? That should be a cyber video. I can't believe that we haven't played that yet. <laughs> I played about all I could take in that particular uh, edit. Oh boy, man! What this is the greatest birthday of all time. It seriously is for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, tears! Like like I'm exhausted. It's a I'm pharaoh looking exhausted. at all the lands he has conquered. <laughs> yeah. well, what, what, are we, what are we gonna go out on here? Because we got. Oh, EP mode. What are we gonna do? We're giving you birthday choice for our bonus. Well, I was thinking, I was, paid. yeah, yeah. For EP mode for ten dollar and up patrons, I was thinking about maybe watching all the Doctor Sternholm video. What do you think, Nick? I mean, I have no idea how Let's long it, it is. I mean, who knows? Let's try it. Like, it could be like seven hours long. There's like, there's like a note written with it that's typed. Like, it's not printed yeah. out on a computer. It's typed. Um, so that's a possibility. I was also thinking I might want to watch um, the close proximity uh, pyrotechnics in its entirety. Yeah. This is a this is two hours. This is two <laughs> hours. So this will uh, really entice some people to help support our show and support all the work we do each week here on VCR Party. Let's just say it's going to be a surprise on Thursday. Okay. It might not be either of those things. I might think of something else that I want to watch. But it's going to be <laughs> my choice for Thursday. We'll watch the Funky Monkey, if nothing else. Yes. Oh, man. Well, thank you, everybody, for putting together all that niceness. And just, ah, uh, boy, I'm a great person. Yeah. Well, what are we going to go out on? We're going to go out on a video that I that I really want to be, like, a birthday tradition. Just, like, right up there with, like, happy birthday, Gene. Um. This is a video that I, for a long time, I didn't know what to do with this video, and I think I finally found it. And um, I'll just say that's all. That's it. I love all you guys. I love all the Melindas. I love everybody who made the videos. And that's all. That's it. And better luck next time, Chucky. We'll be right back right after that. Everybody's a puppet when they're dead. You dumb son of a bitch. You don't watch it 24 hours a day. <laughs> When we return, Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? An A. My nose is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Triodo. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Nice, nice.